Okay, so um, we all have our machines. If I can find them, hold on. Under network admin, we each have a machine. Find your machine and turn it on. Okay. And I recommend doing open console. It brings it up. And yours should be similar to mine. Okay. Everybody remember installing the classic shell last time? We all got that working? Okay. We did a classic shell, then we did Active Directory. Okay, bring yours up and we'll be able to tell if, if, we, if yours is up there or not. Okay. Where do I need to go to bring that up? Um, open up vSphere, open up vCenter, and it'll look like this. Keep clicking the pluses until it opens. I just have one plus. Well, oh, click the plus. Yeah, you'll only have a few pluses. Then click the next plus and the next plus, all the way down to get to network admin. they do map to actual memory and CPUs. So if you all leave them on and they're not being used, it's taking up processing power on our server. It slows it down. Now, if you need them, that's fine. But just turn them off when you're done. Okay? All right. Let's see. Like, his are off. Melvin's here. If your other machine is on, turn it off. I'm just looking. Okay, who is Braden? See, Braden's here is on. And to turn off, you just go power. Power off. Yes. Okay, let's see. Melissa's got hers. We're good there. Good there. Good there. Good there. Okay, everybody else is good. Okay. So once you start up your machine, then right hand click on it and go open console. Okay. Right hand click on your machine and do open console. And it should bring up a window like this. Everybody with me? Okay. Then VM, guest, send control, delete. And the password is password one. <clears throat> okay, and it should come up and look like this. Except you guys will have a different start button than I do. All right, now, once server manager comes up, let's make sure everybody's got Active Directory installed. Wait for it. It's a lot quicker over when no one was using it. Okay. All right, is it all up? It's not done loading yet. It's not done loading yet. Come on. Getting there, it's almost there. All right, and your name is? Hold on. Once you bring your machine up, if you give it a minute, is this is still recording, isn't it? Yeah, okay, good. Up on the left side, it'll tell you what's installed. You should have ADDS. DNS, file management, and WDS. Melissa, do you have any of those? Does everybody else, the rest of you have all those? No, I don't have I don't, that. I don't have the last. You don't have WDS? Okay, you guys might not have WDS yet. Okay, hold on. Let me pause this and come see what you got going over there. The main naming system or services or... It's got a couple different names. Okay. Um... You don't have WDS yet, so let's. So, but the rest of you have these. Uh, with DNS, we can't work without DNS, and we can't install all these functions without Active Directory. Okay. Um, 
we're actually talking about this earlier in this week. See, the 4011 exam, no, I'm sorry, the 4010 exam really covers Active Directory more. And you guys don't have that, so we're, that's why I kind of walked you through the install of it. So we'll probably cover a little more of it in this class, just not at the moment. Okay. I need you guys to click on Add Roles and Features. All right, and it should come up with the screen like this. Then I want you to click Next. Now you can tell it to skip this screen by default. That's fine. I don't care. Then role based. That's what we're doing. Role based. Everybody role based. Then select your machine because you can actually manage other machines from this location. Okay. Now down near the bottom, the second one from the bottom, you'll see Windows Deployment System or Services. Okay. Everyone see that one? Yeah. Okay. If you don't have it checked, check it. If you do have it checked, just sit there a minute. Then just say next, 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 do the whole darn thing until it finishes. Okay? So if you have it installed already and it's kind of grayed out, you're good. Okay? But if you uh, don't have it, check the box for WDS and walk through it. Because uh, I'm going to be checking your machines probably a little bit after we finish this section to make sure you did it. And that way you'll get credit for it. Okay? And if you miss a day of class... It's up to you to get the material done, okay? Since I am recording it now, you'll be able to walk in through and see what we do, okay? But you guys installing it okay? Just keep saying next. Until you get to install. Go to install, then it'll go install for a few minutes, then it'll come up and say close. Okay, is it working? So who's, who's still installing it? Melissa is. Melvin is installing. Everybody else got it already? Nice. All right, Okay. So once it's installed, end up back at this screen here. And on this screen, let's talk about this screen here for a second. Um, you can add roles and features, obviously. You can, you know, add other services. What's nice about that is they really got it set up so a network administrator can sit in one chair and manage the entire network. That's how you can do it. It's very simple to do. Okay. You can add other servers. You can actually even manage clients from your chair. They're making it so we're all fat and lazy. So I'm sorry. That's what's happening. It's you no longer have to, Like when I worked at Tinker at the land shop, we had the capability, but no one used it. They would literally be running all over the building to all these different servers. I'm like, why don't you just add them to your management console and do them all from one machine? You can do that? I'm like, yeah. So, yeah, at least from a desktop. I mean, it was... Back then, it was terminal services client. It wasn't quite as easy, but it's like you can do it all from one. Even downstairs, you know, I'll ask them, hey, I need you to give me admin privileges, okay? So like in the classrooms, Adam will literally come from up here, go all the way down to the classroom, log in to give me admin privileges. I'm like, why don't you just do it from your office? Because you can literally, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go to my Windows 7 here for a second. But I'm going to right hand click on computer and go to manage. And you can even do this from your house. See, this is all the stuff for my machine. Like if I wanted to manage users and groups and stuff like that, I could do it here. But all you got to do is right here click and say connect to another computer. And type in the machine name. I just don't happen to know other, any other machines in this area. BS 214 lab 11. And as long as I have the permissions, maybe not. Uh, so we don't know how Jerry has these set up. Well, the, yeah, it's work. You're yeah. Group, so she has stuff work. Yeah, okay. But normally, if you're on a domain, you can select that. Like at Roast, I do it all the time. In the classrooms, I can go in there and manage the machines and add permissions, add shares, add all kinds of stuff remotely. Yeah, Jerry just re imaged these this week. So that's why they look different than last week. That's why I deleted all my stuff. But it's so easy to do that. It's like, why would you not want to do it all from one place? Okay. So, but you can add other services here. You can also create a server group. Maybe I want a group of servers for this, a group of servers for that. Okay. Yeah, I said it couldn't find me. It was BS-214-LAB11, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not in the right work group. But, all right. So, but down below that, you'll see the stuff you're currently configured to do. Okay. We're currently an Active Directory server. Currently a DNS, 
file storage in WBS, uh, WDS, okay? Now, we have some issues down here. Don't worry about those yet. We'll get to those. But uh, so, but everybody got WDS installed now? No, he just, he does not actually have it installed. Okay, and what's, did you just get here? I got your name, though, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, okay. Did someone come in after you? You came in after him. Hold on a second. Let me. All right, let's continue here. Make sure it's recording. Okay. So, we're getting... Uh, so, can you help him get that installed, Roy? WDS, if it's not. I want you all to click on your little shell button down there and go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, then you should actually see everything we have installed. Okay? Normally, Administrative Tools we do most of your management net. And I want you to go into Windows Deployment Services. Okay? All right. And now I'm going to bring up the slides for lesson one. We're going to go through some of these. Okay. Well, ask me later. Okay, whatever. Just come on. I'm trying to bring up. Hold on. Just, just run. Welcome to your modern office. Thank you. Just get out of here. Just work. PowerPoint up yet? Okay, Windows Deployment Services. Okay, I'm just going to have the screens back and forth. So, with this, we talked about this a little bit, but we can manage servers, we can push images, we can push updates, we can push all kinds of stuff with it. We talked a little, did we mention P, PX, uh, PXE last time a little bit, where you, you can actually boot to a system and actually run a, a operating system that way. Yeah, I mentioned how the top secret network could tinker was too darn slow and everything, so, all right. So PXE is good. It's not used very much. Okay. Now, with WDS, when you install it, you can have two different roles. You can have a deployment server or a transport. You actually deploy from there or are they used to transport the images back and forth. Okay. We're going to look at that here in a second. Okay. Now, we already did this. We selected our roles. We selected WDS. Okay. Then you went through here, and we're probably all set up as deployment. I'm pretty sure that was the default setting. No one changed it, so we're good there. Okay. Then you went through this. And now we're going to configure it, okay? To make this work, we have to be a member of Active Directory. And that's that thing we installed last time, okay? There has to be a DHCP server. Let me t tell you what that is. That stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. What that means is there's a server running down the hall that gives out IP addresses. It's just like at home. You get one from your router or you get one from Cox or whoever your provider is. Because, I'm sorry to tell you, most people have no clue how to configure an IP address. I mean, you all agree with that statement? I mean, can you imagine your moms, your dads, your grandparents configuring an IP address? There's no way. So what happened is, you know, actually, when I worked at Tinker for years, we actually hard-coded the entire domain. And then about a year and a half later, they changed the numbering schemes. Guess what we did? Went out and re-hard-coded the entire domain again. I'm like, why aren't we using DHCP? And they're like, oh, we can't because we have to have special addresses. I said, put in a stupid reservation. You're like, no, we can't do that. They're idiots. <laughs> now they're finally doing that. What I was trying to say is, like in my house, I have DHCP. So when you turn on something in my house, it gets an address. For certain machines, I want to get a certain address. So I had a reservation in the DHCP. So like when my solar system comes online, it connects to the DHCP server and says, hey, I need an address. And it goes, oh, I know of you. I have a table or an IP address reserved for you. And it gives it a certain number. Okay? Same with most things that are important in my house. Things, you know, that, don't, that I do not need to connect to remotely, I could care less about. Okay? But DHCP is like a lifesaver. It has different lease durations. Um, like your lease at home is probably set to 24 hours. I don't know if anyone knows how to check that. But they usually are. That way, if Cox makes any network changes on it, 12 hours later, you're going to get the new information. So it's, it's kind of cool. And it is covered a little bit later in this chapter. Okay? So there has to be an active DNS server on the network. Okay? Something has to be handling naming. And I had each of you install DNS. You're going to handle naming for yourself. Okay? And we'll talk more about that later as well. Okay? WDS has to be running an NTFS. It stands for New Technologies File System. I hate using the word new. You, you know products when they have the word new can really only keep the name for six months? Then after that, they're no longer considered new. 
Okay, why is our file system we've had since NT4 still called new technologies file system? Wouldn't it be old technologies file system? It's new. So, but you have to be running NTFS. NTFS gives us a lot more permissions, gives us, um, um, what's it called, um, transaction processing, basically, because when I worked for a client downtown, we had an um, accounting system. I don't know if you know anything about accounting systems, but they normally open about 400 files at a time, and their system locked up, and they basically said reinstall Windows. And they're like, Oh, no, we lost everything. But I just rebooted, went into check this slash F, which is check this with fix. And with NTFS, it actually goes back to the transaction logs and rebuilt the entire file system. They lost nothing. They booted back up, and they're like, oh, my God, that's a miracle. That's the whole point. It's kind of like a database. If you know anything about databases that have transaction logs, same thing with NTFS. So that's why we need that. Okay? So, um... Initial configuration of WDS. If we bring our WDS up, it should look very similar to what we got. In, actually, well, they're doing it from the other screen. Okay. But they're going to get to our screen here in just a second. But you can click on WDS there, or you can go to Tools, and there on the right-hand side, or else you can go to Administrative Tools. There's a million ways to get to all this stuff. I just had you guys go the other way. Now our screen should look the same. You all agree? They look... Identical, well, close. Okay, so now we're going to get on the servers, okay? and you should see your server. Hopefully, everybody's got a name in there like KDES12, something like that. It should be your initial and your last name. Okay, then we're going to right-click on it and say configure server. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. So before you begin, ensure you have all this stuff. Well, we have all that. We know that. We've already verified that information. Okay, Melvin, you okay? I mean, it canceled. Did you get? Are you there? What's wrong? Oh, yeah, he, well, it sh should have named it way back at the beginning. He actually do it in computer management and change it. Just leave his name like that for now. It's not going to hurt anything, but... That was like step five last time of 20, whatever we did. But okay. Because um, you can actually rename a server. It's just not recommended. But since we're not really, no one's linking to it or anything, it shouldn't be an issue. But all right. So we're going to go in here. We're going to configure server. Now we should be along with them. So we have all that stuff installed. We've already verified that. Now we could become a standalone server. Okay. It says configure the server so it's a standalone operating independently of Active Directory. But normally you want everything to work with Active Directory. Okay, so we're just going to integrate with Active Directory, and I'm pretty sure that's the way the slides are going to do it. Okay? Yeah. All right. So I'm trying to... I wish I could get both on the screen. Maybe... Can I make this a little smaller? Can we kind of see that still? A little bit? Yeah, I can go back and forth. Okay, so we're going to do integrated with Active Directory. Now I want to know where to install the stuff at. Okay? So where are you going to be installing images? Where are you going to put all that stuff at? We're just going to leave what it has in there. We're not going to worry about that. Now, they recommend don't put it on your, vol your Windows system volume. We could care less about that because we're not actually going to use it. But in the real world, you want to install nothing on your system volume. I mean, you might install some programs, but anything with data, databases, uh, Windows update services, deployment services, all that should be stored on a separate volume because you don't want to fill up your C drive. You fill up your C drive, your system crashes pretty much. So it's not a good idea to put it on there, but we're going to do it anyway because... All we have is that, so we're good with that. Okay. All right. So when you come up here, the next thing you want to know is, okay, should you respond to clients? Are we going to be using PXE at all? Well, we're not, so we're not going to respond to any. But you could actually make an image and then tell the PXE uh, services to respond to clients, and what would happen is the clients would connect you with, with Pixie and automatically be running that image. So you could actually have Windows the main window's running on your machine that everybody's connecting to. So we're not going to do that, though. We're going to say forget that, okay? All right. It's not on a domain. Did y'all get that? Yeah. Um, we're a domain controller. We are, aren't we? I don't think it, uh, we, have, we have to go back and promote it to a domain controller, right? I thought we already did that. No, we never got around to that last 
We didn't? Hold on. Well, hell. No, I thought, I know we did that. On the server manager? Yeah, that's what it says. The little uh, flag yeah. up the top. Oh, I, I, fine. Fine. Okay. Promote your domain controller. That's something new. It used to be when you install Active Directory on Mac, you made, promoted you to a domain controller. I thought we did that. Okay, I guess not. Sorry about that. So, thank you for pointing that out. So, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click on the flag, promote to a domain controller. So, why did I... That doesn't even make sense. How do I install Active Directory without becoming a domain controller? That's stupid. That's stupid. Okay. All right, we're going to supply some credentials. The, oh, shit. The, the very top. The top of your server. Yeah, go back, bring your machine up. Yeah. Bring up. Yeah. Get out of there. Stay there. Okay. Okay, so we have an option. Add a domain controller to existing domain, which we've already done. We did make the... No, we did not I swear we made a domain. We didn't do that. Okay, fine. Okay, we're going to become a new domain. Okay. Okay, in our... Well, we want to be... Well, should I become a tree? Yeah, uh, let's go to a new forest. Fine. Okay. All right. Add it to a new forest. The root domain, um, jit, I don't know. Um, <laughs> what should we name it? Let's just call it Rose. See if we all, actually, you know what? We can't all be the same domain. We have to be separate. We need to be separate trees. Yeah, do Rose in that number that's on your vCenter thing. Remember how each of you have a number over there? Remember those numbers? I'll leave them up for a second if you want to look at mine. Do Rose and your number. So, Sam, is it Sam? Is that right? Sorry. Scott. Darn it. Scott's 91, Cody's 92, Caleb's 93, Roger's 94, Joseph's 95, Melissa's 96, Omar's 97, Braden's 98, Brent's 99, Sam's 100, Melvin's 101, Stephen's 101 as well. Roy, can you rename Stephen to 102? He hasn't been here anyway. So how did I put two of the same number? That's weird. Okay. So, I'm going to be row 00 because I'm awesome like that. Okay, do next. Okay, add a new forest. That's fine. What? Oh, come on. It should do it. Verification forest failed. Do you need any rows proposed for this domain? Consist. Oh, you can't have numbers? Seriously? Proposed for domain. Contains a single label. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Put rows dot. Edu, whatever I mean. That edu at the end. They want the two-level domain name. That should take it. Yeah, that works. So put rose your number dot edu. See, before you could just do it anyway. They are, they don't like it anymore. Okay. All right. So everybody here. Yeah. Wait for Melissa to get rid of the red. Okay. Everybody got rid of the red. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now the functional level, what they're talking about here is every version of Active Directory is incorporated in new components. Okay, so are you compatible with prior ones? So we're all 2012, we can just like 2012. But if you have older machines around, older domain controllers, you would have to select a lower level. Because, you know, so we're just going to leave it at 2012. Okay, and we'll leave that at 2012. Now, yeah, with the same thing here. Now we can select the password. Go with password one again. That way we'll all remember it. That way when you all forget, I can say it's password one. Okay. What? Come on. You're kidding me here. We'll do it anyway. Just say go, go it anyway. 
It should set up the DNS zone for us. It doesn't worry about that later. Okay. Verify the NetBIOS name assigned to the domain change as necessary. Okay. NetBIOS name. It should be just your machine name without the .edu. The domain name without the .edu. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Actually, you know what? Change. Yeah, leave it that way. Yeah, leave it that way. So it's just rows in your number. Leave it like that. So it's the same without the .edu. Okay, where do we want to install all the Active Directory files? See, I knew it was too fast to install Active Directory last time. That's why. This didn't do all this stuff. Okay, now we know. All right. So it's going to install a bunch of stuff. Is everybody at this screen right here? Hopefully. Okay, do next. And it should install Active Directory. Hopefully. What? Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah, that's fine. We can let it too. Uh, warning has a default for into. Yeah, that's fine. Live with it anyway. Just say okay. Say so in theory, we should have done the 410 stuff first, which would have been configuring all this. But since we're beyond that, so it's okay. All right. Come on, let's check in if group policy needs to be installed. Come on, I don't want to take the whole class by doing this. All right, it's working on it. So is everybody working on it? I got 500 items left. Let's add them to the Active Directory schema, which is kind of like the settings. I don't know how else to say it. But. All right, successfully configured. Yay! All right. Okay, now we got that up and running. We didn't have... To, there it goes. You're about to be signed off. Okay, mine's restarting. Is everybody restarting? Where are you in my machine? I'm kind of in this machine. Oh, okay. So it yes. says you got more than one connection. It's just Roy. Did you rename Steven for me? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. All right, restarting... Then we're going to get back to... WDS. Cannot believe it didn't automatically do all that. That's just not even fair. It always did in the past. 2012, we do get tips. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. Why would we install Active Directory and not become a domain controller? That doesn't make sense. Because we're that cool. <laughs> Stupid. Six thirteen. Oh, it's not bent yet. See, that's in flat. <laughs> what do you push to release Control Alt. Okay, it'll come back up here in a minute. Let me pause this recording now that I've been rebooting for five minutes. Lost my mouse. All right, we are back. Let's make sure the recording is actually ticking away. It is. That's good. I'm going to log back in. Well, if I can get this thing to work. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something before we do anything else once this comes up. Come on. We're a server manager. There it comes. It's on the way. Man, it's only 417. We're early. See? Get my clock down there. Okay, so it's coming up fine. Local server is good. Make sure it looks like it's somewhat functional. Show me the rest. Come on.
All right, we'll let that finish coming up. I want to, if you go back to this guy right here, this screen right here, and watch what I do, then you can do the same if you want. You don't have to. I'm going to right here click on my machine and say snapshot, take a snapshot. Okay. Now I'm going to say after AD install. What that's going to do is it's going to take a snapshot of my machine's current configuration. So if I screw it up from this point out, I can always revert back to it. You know what I mean? Snapshots gives the ability to save a state in time. Because, like, I've already gone through and installed WSUS today. Then I reverted back and un removed it all. But if you make a snapshot by right-hand clicking on your machine and go snapshot, take one. Then you can, like, here I got my initial snapshot. And then prior to WDS and SUS. Is, oh, it's still making the one I just said. Okay. That's yeah, still making the current one. Does the machine have to be off to do a snapshot? No, it doesn't, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, Roy, Roy took it. It's considerably faster. It's yeah. It's a whole bunch faster. Because there's actually quite a few of you making snapshots right now, I can see. And yeah, they're all at the bottom. But, well, yeah, because if the snapshot has the machine running, if you refer back to the snapshot, the machine's going to be running again. If the snapshot you do when the machine's off, it'll refer to that. But, no, it doesn't have to be running to do it. So, if you screw it up, say we installed uh, WDS and it crashes, you can always revert back to this and it'll be before you install WDS. So, kind of cool. It's really made for testing purposes. All right, I want to try this update. Darn, it made the system crash. Revert back to before the update, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, so back in here, we got Active Directory, we got DNS, we got File Services and WDS. We need to manage WDS. Okay. We're going to go up to Tools, and it should be right. There it is Tools, Windows Deployment Services. Everybody with me? Oh, okay. Well, it's probably creating your snapshot. It could be. We give you some hold music. <laughs> uh, we're gonna hold a lot today. Yeah, that's what it is. Y'all are doing snapshots. Well, actually, no, mine's still going. Wow. Oh well, if it doesn't work, well we'll make one later. But we don't care about that. So, is anybody else up to where I'm at? One or two of you? I see one of you. But I'm gonna go up to Tools and I'm gonna go down here to Windows Deployment Services. Tools is just like clicking Control Panel after uh, Administrative Tools. And you should come up with the same place we were at before. Okay. I see quite a few of you are there. Yes, a lot of you are here. Good. So we're going to click on our server. And we are going to right-hand click over here and do configure server. Now we're going to walk through this all again. Integrator of Active Directory. Do C remote install. Yes, we know. Do it on there anyway. Don't respond to anybody, and now it should configure itself. Yeah, because the thing about while we're using it and it's making a snapshot, it might have a slight issue. But that's okay, we don't care. Alright, so this, yeah, it looks like most of you are. You doing this? I did it. It's cheating! Alright. Okay, I, I don't want to add any images to my server at this point. I'm going to say finish. Now you'll see I got my machine up and running, okay? So some of you are there at least. It's pretty quick and easy now that we had Active Directory installed. Okay, so we did the initial configuration. We did all that. Um, okay, let's go to, let's see, what do we need to do next? Um, okay, let's go to the properties of our server. What I did was I right-clicked. On my server, which is your all server's name should be similar to kdues 12rose your number dot edu. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. For the most part. You don't have the.
Okay. Well, it's going to work without it. It should. services and try to start it. Services. Found the WDS and start it. That doesn't work to reboot the machine. Alright. Right. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Let's continue on. Okay. So I'm gonna right click on my machine, go to properties, and we got a bunch of settings in here. Alright, there's the Pixie response so we can actually change that if we wanted to. This is what we answered before, okay? We can also add a delay to it. Maybe we want to, you know, so many seconds to let them respond to it. It's one of those things, you know, press a key to continue. Okay, here's our Active Directory information. Same domain as Active Directory Server. Do you all have that, even with the short names? Do you have this heading? Same domain and everything? That's, yeah. Okay, so you have the same name there? Same... Command is the window deployment server. Okay. Alright. Alright. Boot. Okay. Require user press F12. That's fine for Pixie stuff. We're not using Pixie anyway. Uh, DHCP. Now, this here, this is if we're running a DHCP server, we're not. Okay. We can also configure DHCP options to push them out with our Pixie services, but we're just not running that yet. Okay. Uh, multicast means you can actually. Multicast is kind of what Netflix does. Can set out a bunch at a time. Okay, rather than unicast, it's multicast. Rather than sending it just to him, I can send it to all of you at one time, which is actually a lot quicker. Especially like say you got images this whole room. If I had to send a 20 gig image to him and then to her, then every machine will take a long time. But if you use multicast, it sends it all out at one time. Okay. Um, okay. Dynamic we find domain services and nothing special. Okay, let's continue on. Let's go down here. We've already gone through that. We've already done that. I think I'm a couple. Okay, there's the. Yeah, we're not going to set up to respond to the Pixie clients, but that's you saw where to do it. it was on that screen. Okay. Okay, and there's the Active Directory screen. We looked at that. There's actually let's, let's make sure I got all these. Be sure I didn't miss one. Okay, the boot screen, okay, this whole F12 thing, um, it's, you ever see when you boot your machine, it's like, it'll automatically boot to the hard drive, but if you hit F12, you can boot to a CD-ROM or a flash drive, that's what that is, you can have it where they can hit F12 to Pixie boot, or boot automatically, so it really, you know, depends on what you need for your installation, okay, then there's the client information, okay, so on the client screen here, it says obtain, uh, wait, no, I'm sorry, wrong one. There it is, client, okay. You can do unattended installations, okay. What those are is a machine can boot up and automatically install Windows, especially like when you're imaging lab and stuff like that, okay. It'll need a sysprep file, which they cover here in a minute, but allows us to basically just do the install. They use that here in our labs all the time. They very easily just push it out to the entire lab. They image normally once a semester. That means they get the image all set up in the, in the control room down there. Then between semesters, 
they push out a new image and it automatically the machines boot up connect to the server do the install and then they're good so kind of a nice feature okay then they go to DHC oh, on multicast now I mentioned that that's where you can push a bunch out at one time rather than a unicast request okay there's keep all multicast in the sessions the same speed What's that's nice about they kind of all drop back to whatever the slowest person can handle which is nice it's just it's just best that way because Arlene you know we've we've imaged actually this room even sometimes it takes like six hours but still it's better than installing them all separately okay so there's multicast there's advanced we don't need to do anything there and I think okay the DHCP is if you have a separate DHCP server running which we have we must um, let me go back to that screen here. Where's DHCP? Okay. We don't want to listen on DHCP ports. In other words, we don't want to give out any DHCP inform information. Okay. Because if we don't check that, what's going to happen is we're responding to the... See, DHCP has what's called DORA. Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledgement. Okay. The Discover is when a client says, hey, I need an IP address or something, okay? Then the server would offer. That's the second step in the process. We don't want to respond to that at the moment, but we could if we wanted to, okay? So that's what that is. We're, we don't want to listen to it, okay? You could also configure DHCP to indicate that this is a Pixie server, which we're not. What does Tamron want? Uh, this might actually be something important. Hold on. That's Cameron. What? No, that's bogus. Okay, so, um, again, we're not going to listen on them anyway, so we're just going to leave them the top one checked, the bottom one unchecked. Okay? And apply that so we don't lose that. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, if the applicants do not perform, the WDS clients will not be able to find the WDS server. Well, again, we're not going to become one. We're just walking to see through to see how this stuff works okay all right and this is the DHCP options actually and that's actually we don't have that installed I can't show you that we can't look at this because we don't have DHCP installed on here so yeah I'm trying to think at least I don't think it is click on your tool I'm gonna minimize that you don't have DHCP installed do we no we don't so I can't show you that but what this is um, what do we have? Wait, we have these here. I can show you what it is. Hold on. I'll show you. I, I can show you right. You guys won't be able to see this, but I'll just show it to you on the screen. We have a uh, active directory controller down the hall, which also performs DHCP, I think. In theory, it does. This is a live one working on the domain here, so... All right, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go into Active Directory Administrative Tools, or whatever. Then DHCP. There it is. Okay. Okay. This should look like the slides right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can actually configure DHCP options. Okay. So what this server does, real quick on DHCP, this server gives out IP addresses. Okay. We have the scope of 10.10.0.0, okay, and it's giving out, wow, it's not giving out any, okay, so it must be getting it from the domain controllers, okay, so, but we could go into scope options here, and in our options, what this is, means is, I know we're barely touching on this, but if a client, oh, actually, our scope is offline, that's why, they wonder why that's off, Roy? I wonder who would have turned that off. Because that's weird. It should be activated. Okay. But, anyway, under scope, we have routers, DNS servers, all that kind of stuff. We can configure other stuff. We can go in here and we can configure name servers and time servers and log servers and all kinds of stuff. And option 60 should be WDS. Let's see. W, well, it's not a, okay, this one is server 08, so it's probably not the same option number, but what they're talking about is, let's see, what DHCP predefined options, 
There's the time offset. Hold on, I'm trying to find the number. They're not showing me the option number. Eh, well, they're not showing it to me. But that sucks. But um, if I could see what number they were using, because I don't know what the number of WDS is, you could actually go in here and configure to pass out information about the WDS server. I don't know if you can see the screen there, but you can put out mail servers, web servers, finger servers, all kinds of information. I don't see WDS yet. NTP. No one saw it yet, did they? Okay. But if we had, if we knew which option it was, we could put it in here. What that would cause, it would cause the clients to automatically know where to get the WDS server from. It's nothing that critical, but that's what they're talking about there. Okay. Managing boot installs, there's two types. There's sector-based and file-based. Sector-based is like every sector on the hard drive. So if you, if you get an image of the entire hard drive, sector-based, means you're either going to get partial files, you're going to get deleted files, you're going to get all the files. Okay. File base means you're just getting the files. There's something called file slack. Um, we cover it in forensics. No one's in forensics yet, are they? None of you? Okay. Basically, we have a, a sector. Uh, say a sector is the size of my phone. It contains information. But if the file only uses up three quarters of the sector, the leftover space is called file slack. Okay? So if I do file base, I'm just going to get the file. But if I do sector base, I'm all going to get that little little leftover information, which actually, forensics wise, is kind of important. Because if I had a bigger file there before and I overwrite it with a smaller file, there could be leftover data there. So, sector base is usually the best way to go. Okay, you get a much better image. Okay. All right. It says uh, to boot images install images use the Windows imaging format WIM format allows file structures, folders, and files, and everything to work into a single database. It makes, just makes it easier to manage, okay? We should be able to now, let me find my machine here. Let me get out of here, go back into my machine. Don't need this up anymore. Okay, boot, and we don't need that. We need boot images. Where's WDS? Okay. Boot images, we should be able to click over here and add a boot image, okay? So inside WDS, say we had an image made somewhere, okay? What we could do is we could point to it. We could say, hey, this boot image is a certain location. Then if we turn on Pixie Boot, the clients could connect to it and install from that image, okay? It could be off a of DVD. It could be off of whatever, okay? You could also do the same for, yeah, I want to stop adding because I don't have a file to add, so it won't let me. You could do the same for installing images. You could do the same thing, add install image. I could create a new image group. I could tell it where it's at, and we could install from here. Uh, you could have many images. You could have a special image for a certain room, a special image for accounting, a special image for whoever. So you could actually have multiple install images. Okay. So that's how you add those. It's pretty easy to add once they're already made, which we're going to talk about here in a second. So here's how to add them. I just showed you where that's at. Okay, and you would select the file system where it's at. Image files, if you have a WIM, you can actually copy them from one machine to another. You could build them on one machine, copy them to here. Okay, Just copy all the files over, get permissions for the group to read them, and then you're up and running. So it's not all that difficult. And that's what we just showed you. You can add an image file. And here's a sample of a bunch of them. There's server 2008, uh, standard core, then we have... Server standard, server data center, server data center core. So you could have multiple types of images in there. Okay. All right. So how to create them. All right. It says the WDS image is basically the entire computer. I think, you know, if that's what Jerry used in here, he probably did. Yeah, I'm assuming he did. Basically, you take an entire machine and you capture the image off it and use it. You can put updates, you can put drivers, you can put everything. What you want to do is get your one machine configured correctly. So go to your client machine, get all the software installed, get everything done on it, then you pull the image up. Okay? It says the image includes a Windows installation. This is images of basic Windows. 
and but they're you can have them with no updates on them with all the drivers on them and pretty much anything like that okay it says to set up a master computer it says use wds to create your own image which they're going to show here in a second they have the capture utility i know we're not walking through all this sorry there's no way we would have time to walk through creating all these images it would take forever but you can capture one with the capture utility i think it's on here, isn't it? Let's see. Is it on here? Does it give us the option in here? I don't know if it's on here. Ah! Crap. Click something. Shouldn't have clicked that. That's backup. We don't need that. Okay, I don't see that on here. I don't see the capture image installed on our machine. Because we don't have a boot image to work with, so... Actually, let me let me try that real quick. That might work. I'm gonna, I'll do it with a boot image. I'm going to try adding a boot image. I'm going to put it on my... Um, didn't we make a directory for that? C. Mode install. We're going to call this boot. Okay. All right. And file name is going to be uh, x64 images. Yeah, it's, there's no files there, so we're not going to be able to do it. How about, well, let me try another one here. Let's go to C. I can't create a new one in here. Ah. I can't create a new image in here. Um, oh well, just pretend I was able to create a new image. But we're, we can't. I, sorry, I can't create a new image in there. Okay. There's got to be a way to capture one, though. Hold on. Don't give up yet. Let me... Okay, add image. Actually, yeah. Well, let me try the install it and see if that one works. Come on. Okay, we can put this... Actually, I see. I can't. It already has to be created. Sorry, I can't do that. We don't have the ability. Why don't we have the ability to do that? I will figure out why that's not on here. But we can't specify because we don't have one already made. Okay. But if you had one already made, uh, I tell you, if I can get that to work, I'll make a separate recording of it this week and let you all watch it and you can see how to get the capture and image work. I'll try to capture one downstairs or something, but I just don't have it on this one. So, all right. Sysprep is the windows installer tool and it should be on our machines. Let's look under C windows system 32. And then where's it at? Sysprep. Hopefully that's on here. S Y S prep. There it is. Okay, here's sysprep. Okay. What you can actually do with sysprep is create an install file, which they're going to talk about here. So server 12 is located in that directory. When running it, you can you use the command line for it. And you go through and answers all the image, all the questions so that the person, you know, the unintended install doesn't have to do it. I don't know another way to say that. Okay. All right, and it says, you yeah, see, they're creating all these images, which we're not going to create. Yeah, I, see, I can't even create that. But I will get one of these create image working, and I'll make a video of how to do it, okay? I just can't do those, okay? Um, that's going to suck, okay? You can actually make ISOs boot like they're talking about here. Um... You're going to make the answer file. See, that sucks. We can't do that. Well, I'll come back to this after we get the other part working, okay? Once I get the image capture working, I'll come back and go over that. We'll go over that stuff with you. Because I need all that to get this part to work, and I don't have the answer file. All right. So I think for now, since we're only got 10 minutes left anyway, let's stop at this. We're not leaving yet. Let's stop WDS at the moment. I'll finish that up for next time. But before we leave, I want to get WSUS installed. That's the next section we're going to play with next time. 
So just get out of WDS. And I want you to go to add a role. That way it's ready for next time. Okay, add your role. Go next. 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 Then at the very, very bottom is software update services. Does everybody find software update services at the very, very bottom? They were way down there at the bottom. Click it. Now this is going to take a while. So I want to do it now. Add this feature, including the management tools. And do next. And just click next without changing anything. And next. And just click next again. We're, we'll talk about those but this is going to, come on, it's going to take a minute here. Didn't I already do it? No, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. You should be able to find with just that. Oh, okay, because it, no, you can't, you can't add that one. So it should do it without it. Oh, there it is. There's, I can barely see that on here. C, we'll do WSUS. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't see that on my screen for some reason. Okay. And next, um, then when it comes up with um, the role services, do next. Then click the restart if necessary because we want this to automatically restart on us. And then install. It's going to install it, but there's one... Okay, we've got a couple minutes, so let that go. Come on. There's a setting in here that takes like 20, 30 minutes to run, is why I want to get it started real quick. Everybody find WSUS? You call it anything you want, but C, WSUS. C colon backslash WSUS is fine. Okay, so it started. Come on. It's halfway done. Is, there, is everybody's going through okay? Yeah, it'll take a minute to get there. You can also close this window, but I wanted to see if it finishes. Okay, I'm a little over halfway. Come on. Come on. I'm going to pause for a second while this Let's resume. Okay. I'm done. So did I beat anybody? That's all that matters. I just have to beat some of you. Just have to beat some of you. Okay. So I'm going to do close here. Okay. Then under tools, WSUS. I want to kind of get this installed before we go home. You're okay if we stay to the last second, aren't you? Say yes. No. Yes. Okay. Just bring up tools and, and WSUS because it's going to take forever. That's why I want to kind of get it done now. And what we'll do is we'll leave them running when we leave. Then we'll have Roy later just pause them all. Oh, if I can get it to run. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Complete the installation. Now, it's going to ask you where to store the updates. I found this down on the toolbar. You might have to click it to get it to come up. And if we have the space issue, we can always... Yeah, we can always give you more space. It so, might be in the form of a whole disk, but then That's fine. <laughs> so, you want to tell it to install in CWSUS. Might not finish today. <laughs> it was much quicker today when I was doing it all by myself. I was like, we're done. I'm like, all right. Excuse me. So I guess I could. Do all this downstairs and record it all and just tell you to follow it at home. But 
I'm going to do something for that install and uh, capture image, but we'll see about that. Everybody check their email. Do you all know how to do that? So if I send you an email, you'll get it. Unlike that first email I sent y'all, I got nobody responded. That's, nobody. That's perfect. Like it's an email from the D, not the... Yeah. Well, no, he sent you one. Then I sent you one from inside of D2L asking you, hey, does anyone have a clue where you're at and what you did? I didn't get that one. No one got that one? I didn't know who it was from. What's cool? Oh. <laughs> well, just check your email. I sent it from D2L, so it's going to come with a bunch of stuff at the beginning. Asterisk, 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 D2L, blah, blah, blah. They might have read it out. It could have come in a spam, yes. This is for All right, we might be stuck here tonight since we're running out of time. I'm going to pause this recording until it does something. Okay, is it recording? Okay, good. We're still recording. Okay, I'm going to close this and come on. Okay, there it goes. Get here. Come on, we got two more minutes. You guys are wait. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's this right here, this um, right after upstream servers where it gets very slow. I'll tell you what, this would be a great thing for you guys to walk through sometime this week, between now and next Thursday. Click next, next. Synchronize with update server. Leave this unchecked. Leave proxy server unchecked. Do start connecting. And right here is going to take a while. Okay. When it finishes, when it finishes, click the pause button up here. See this pause button right here? What that is do is just pause your machine. Because I don't want you to go any farther. The reason is that's when we have to select the products. And if you tell it to download every darn product Microsoft has, you're going to run out of hard drive space, and you're going to kill our network. So when you get to the start connecting, let that finish, and then it'll come up with a big old list of software. Stop right there. Then just pause your machine. Okay? Yeah, leave proxy unchecked. We'll talk a little bit about that more next time, but I just want to get this going because it takes a while. So what you can do now is once you get to this, just leave your machine running, close it out, and sometime this week, go look at your machine, make sure that finished. It should be a bunch of check boxes with all the different products from Microsoft. When you see that, just pause your machine. That's all you got to do. You got homework, okay? It's really hard. <laughs> okay, so when you... Are you in that part where it's starting connecting? Okay, when that finishes, there'll be a window with a whole bunch of checkboxes for all the different software products. It'll have, I think it'll show with Biz Server and a bunch of other stuff. When you see that, just hit the pause button. Okay. So you everybody understand what you're going to do? You're, just give it an hour or two. Then sometime between now and the next couple days, just go in there. And if that part's finished, just hit pause and you're good. Okay. But you can just close the X. Close the X out at the top. The X, and it will your machine will continue to run. See, even though, you know, you can't see it, my machine is actually down here running. If I was to right-hand click to open console, it goes right back into where I left off, and it's still running. So I'm going to click this X up here, this red X at the top. What that does is it closes my connection to it, but it's still running. Okay, so some, go home, make sure you got vSphere installed, right-click here, open console, and if this is finished, if this is done and it's got next or whatever on it, just click the pause button up there and you're good. Because this is the part that took forever downstairs. I know it's going to take a while for you all up here. Okay, so do that, then you can close this out. I'm going to stop the recording.